um, I don't know what we should, what, what fish should we put in this scape when it's finished? Seeing the empty aquarium just fills me with excitement because mm -hmm. it's just like unlimited potential. Hi well, everyone, welcome to this new vlog all about how I aquascaped this beautiful Awase Scape Line 60. Scaped it yesterday with the Awase UK social media manager Max. Hi, I'm Max. It's a great, great day of fun filming that, so make sure you subscribe to the Awase UK YouTube channel for the full high quality video that's okay so this is a vlog filmed with my phone but before we go into the vlog just a very quick one about how important it is to maintain a brand new aquascape so i'm going to do that now i'm going to maintain it for you really you really enjoyed this maintenance video so i thought i'd do a bit more maintenance related content and yeah just to say maintenance on a brand new aquascape is absolutely vital if you don't do those frequent water changes at the beginning, especially in a high energy setup with CO2 injection and relatively high lighting, you will run into algae issues. So my method, and this is a method that's been working for many hobbyists, is at least 50% water change a day for the first week, every other day for the second week, every third day for the third week, and then after four weeks or a month, you can go to 50%. Uh, once a week. I talk about this in my book. It might seem like a lot of water, it is a lot of water, but it will almost guarantee you less chance of algae. Um, you can always recycle that water, you can water your garden or your house plants etc with it as well and it is just a, a surefire way to help prevent those algae issues. Other things that we do to help prevent algae is to plant heavily we haven't completely rammed this full of plants, as you can see, but it is planted quite densely. Every sort of square inch does have a, a plant in there. Several species in here, which we'll talk about later. Um, and, and there's some fast growing stem plants in here as well. So the Matagrosensa, the Myriophyllum, Matagrosensa there will grow fast. We've got some Myriophyllum Guyana and some other stem plants, the Gratiola, which isn't quite so fast. Reconodorus remi, that's a fast grower as well, so that will help to avoid algae issues. Basically, the faster growing the plants are, the more we look after them, the less chance of algae we get. And of course, those frequent water changes. I actually have a mature filter in here as well, Biomaster 350 Thermo with mature media, so that's going to help. Got brand new soil in here, so you can potentially get an ammonia spike, which will can trigger algae, so that's another reason why we want to do those frequent water changes. Hi everyone, George here. Welcome to a brand new vlog. Behind the scenes with a Wise UK. Say hello, Max. Hi, I'm Max, social yeah. media manager for a Wise. Um, um, yeah. yeah, Max is going to do the proper filming and I'm just going <laughs> to be vlogging the whole thing. So we're going to be setting up a Scape Line 60 today. We've got a brand new Biomaster, brand new soil, fertilizers, etc take you through the whole day it's going to be really good fun trip to aquarium gardens to get some plants i'm excited are you excited max yeah it should be a good little video it's nice to see them come out of the box brand new get it all set up from scratch nice little thing for you guys behind the scenes see yeah. see the magic happen exactly all right i hope you enjoy it guys if you do hit a thumbs up subscribe <laughs> if you haven't done so yet and leave us a comment um i don't know what we should what, what fish should we put in this scape when it's finished all right okay so i'm just going to intermittently film throughout the day and yeah, it's gonna be good fun. Okay, just set up the cabinet. Just a quick rundown of some key features of the cabinet for those that aren't aware. Everything's really high quality as you expect with a Wise German engineering, etc. A couple of unique features that I really like are the sliding filter tray here, so you can really easily maintain your pre-filter like this here. And then we've got some really cool magnets here. Let's get rid of this ugly mark later. There's some really strong magnets here for our tools, which I'm using already here, as you can see. Uh, you have some positions here for a shelf, which I'm not going to use because we're going to be using pressurized CO2. The bottle's going to come up here, so that there actually won't be any room for a shelf. But if you had a smaller filter, etc., obviously you can use your shelf and then fit your, you know, your fish food, fertilizers, maintenance kit, etc. Some really cool slots here for your filter, outlet, inlet, and CO2 hosing. And then we actually have some magnetic kind of inserts, which we can put in in various configurations, depending 
on your requirements for your where you want to put your hoses, etc. A beautiful kind of matte finish, grey. I think it comes in black, and I think they might be releasing a white, but don't quote me on that. Uh, soft close hinges, push to release door here as well. Protective layer here, which you've just fitted. And that is the cabinet in a nutshell. Okay, we've got the actual tank now fitted to the cabinet. It looks amazing, doesn't it? I love a brand new aquarium. No scratches. It's the ultimate blank canvas. As you can see, low iron glass. So you can see that light blue color here. And that is because it's low iron. If you'll see a regular float glass aquarium will be like a dark green color, um, which is actually less transparent. So. The idea of the low iron glass is that you're minimising any distraction. It's six mil glass, low iron, like I say, mitered corners. Let's get a close up of that for you. Minimum silicon work, again, to minimise the distraction. And yeah, just a really beautiful aquarium to escape. Very exciting. I love, this is the most, seeing the empty aquarium just fills me with excitement. Mm. This is just like unlimited potential of what we can create. Yeah, it still be a case of starting now and seeing where it's going to go. I just wonder if, I wonder if anyone wants to predict in the comments what's going to look like. Yeah, <laughs> I do want to go for a carpeting plant, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, next step will be soil, hardscape, plants. Yeah, then we'll uh, carry on on the exciting journey. Okay, the soil and the hardscape are in. We're using a Wise Scaper soil, nine litres, which is one large bag. This is the black type, they do a brown type as well. And this beautiful piece of wood, just one piece of wood. This was donated by Aquarium Garden several months ago. It's been in my garden in a large bucket soaking. So hopefully it's going to sink. It did have some kind of biofilm on it, some white fungus that may, most of you have kind of know about with uh, some wood that you can get after installation. So I scrubbed that off with running water. And I'm not actually gonna use any stones. I want to plant really heavily, like plant densely from the outset. That's gonna give us the best chance of success right from the start and just a very bold, beautiful piece of wood. Nice and simple, excited to start planting. Okay, we've been to Aquarium Gardens and shout out to Dave Pierce, the owner there for being so kind and supporting this project with these beautiful plants. The vast majority from Tropica Aquarium Plants and the vast majority of the one two grows. So these are grown in, in the Danish laboratories and guaranteed to be free from algae, pests, pesticides, disease, and pest snails. So I really like these. They're already adapted to grow in, in their underwater state, so they'll start growing right away. Got a couple of pots, got some big calandra red and some schismatoglottis prey toy. They're both epiphytes, although the schismatoglottis can also be planted into the soil. So the plant choice is quite deliberate. And I'm going to plant in quite specific areas as outlined with the pot positions as they are right now. So we'll prepare each species one at a time and then plant it and then move on to the next species. And at the end, we'll go through in more detail what the species are and how we can expect them to grow in over the coming weeks. I'm really excited. I love, I love the planting process. I love to plant densely. And that's why we've just got the one piece of wood and of course, lots of open space there for these beautiful plants. Really excited to prepare them and plant them. Okay, we're rolling in. We are rolling, go for it. <laughs> okay, so there's our aquascape planted, ready to watch grow in, in our beautiful Awaze Scaper Line 60. I've had a great time aquascaping this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. We've got a really great selection of plants here. Of course, thank you so much to Oase for supplying all of the products here and to Aquarium Gardens for supplying the plants and the beautiful wood. Do let us know in the comments what kind of fish you'd like to see in here in the long term. We will be doing update videos, including how we maintain this. We're going to be using the Oase Scaper Line fertilizer range as well as the soil, which we've already fitted. Of course, we've got the Oase Biomaster Thermo Filter as well. So it really is a great way to showcase the Awaze's commitment to aquascapers and I'm very proud to be a Awaze ambassador and have such a beautiful aquarium in my living space at home. So thanks again for watching, take care and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Clockwork, brilliant. All right, so now it's just, there you are. You're, you're done. So I'm, I'm just gonna get a couple of pieces here, there. So you, you chill, I'll chill. top this. Uh, cool. I'll do, uh... See how this came out on here actually. Okay, that's the scape 
fully planted now. It's tricky to kind of visualize how it's going to turn out at the moment. The issue, it's not an issue really, but the, the thing with the one, two grow plants is because of the nature of how they're stored in their pots, you can see here, they're kind of growing, you know, they're actually growing in these pots and there's such a tight kind of tight space, they tend to get really deformed and they don't look anything like they will do once they're grown in. It'll only take a few days or so for them to straighten out, reach for the light. And uh, sounds like something from The Last of Us, doesn't it? Reach for the light. Some of you may be able to visualize this already. Um, very simple layout, of course, just one piece of wood. The main focus here is the healthy plants, hopefully. I'll go through each species right now. We've got the Marcellaire Hirsuta full carpet at the front. Behind that, we've got Ranunculus inundatus. And then behind that, we've got the Grati Gratiolia viscadula. Behind that, we have Myriophyllum guyana. And then over here, we have Myriophyllum massagrosensa. Now, all it's quite sparse at the moment, but they will, it will grow quite quickly, I'm sure. Um, over to the right, uh, underneath this kind of shaded area here, we've got Cryptocorne Moyoya, Echinodorus reni, Schismatoglottus praetoi, and then some Bucophalandra red here, here, and here, and then finally some Java moss attached to the wood. And very, very rarely use mosses in my scapes, and even more rarely do I tie it on with thread. So, <laughs> see how this one turns out. Um, there's a few areas for improvement. You know, these ed these sawn off edges here could be tidied up. You know, I did an interview recently with um, Tom Ryan and we talked about that. So, maybe being a bit hypocritical there by not doing it myself. The equipment, we're running the Wio Slim. This is, I think it's 40 watts. So it's not particularly high lighting, but plenty enough for these plants. Got some nice glassware there with 12 mil hosing. Now it does normally come with 16 mil, so I've used reducers there. Inline CO2, uh, Greenleaf Aquarium diffuser there, and you can see the bubble right there, probably two bubbles a second, maybe three. And you can maybe see the, the bubbles coming out there, getting fired all around the tank nicely to feed the plants. Fertilizers, I'm actually going to use the Oase fertilizer range. And we're using the Oase soil as well. So really nice to be able to use the full kind of Oase kit on here. But yeah, I really like this. It's uh, you know not a fancy scape by any means, but something that's going to look healthy and lush and be a lovely home for the shrimp or fish, whatever I keep in here in the long term. Speaking of which, what do you think I should keep in here? And actually as a separate topic, I'm wondering if I should keep fishing here at all. I'm going to use this as a kind of high high turnover tank. Get lots of um, lots of scapes from this tank, I think, and experiment with different plants. Create content for Tropica plant profiles in my own library. I'm considering writing another book. You can see the CO2 there. There's bubbles getting around nicely. Um, yeah, so interesting, I might not put fish because in my mind, if you're turning over a tank every three or four months, then the fish, you know, is, is it really ethical to to kind of use those fish as a almost like a disposable ornament just to satisfy your creative desire? Or do, should you be keeping fish in the long term, you know, like these ones over here? You know, but these are now probably four, four years old at least. I've had these running in there now, beautiful. Um, <clears throat> speaking of fish, these are looking nice in here. And this aquarium here, I am gonna escape, re -escape this soon. So this is originally escape for uh, Ty Streetman's Aquatic Habitats book. I don't think any of there, there's one there. See if we can get up close and personal. Beautiful little goby. So these will be taken back to the store soon and I will be rescaping uh, this Scapolana 60. The plants are here. 
It won't spoil the surprise, but it's going to be more of an Iwagumi, I think, more rock based. So we've got pure wood in here, and we'll do pure rocks in here. So that wraps it up for this video, guys. Just a quick kind of informal behind the scenes vlog. Shout out to Wise, of course, for supporting my channel and, and my career. I am their ambassador. And we have a beautiful trio now of, um, of aquascapes. You'll notice the lights on the 400 are very dim. And if you watch my maintenance video, we talked about the lighting using the twin star at the back, just the 900 at the back and the 1200 is only on for a midday burst. So it's obviously off at the moment and that's why it looks relatively dark, but bright at the back for those swords. Um, I am going away for a few days. Um, I'm going to see my good friend Adam Paschkeller in Poland. He is a master aquascaper with the ADA Idea Studio, so you can expect some beautiful content from there. Fukada as well from Japan, arguably one of the world's best aquascapers, IOPLC winner, and overall kind of legend in the aquascaping hobby. I think one of the founders of the Tokyo Aquascaping Union. And him with Adam, I kind of feel like a bit of a, a young apprentice even though I've been in the hobby over 20 years, these guys are far more experienced and um, skilled than I ever will be. So excited to get some wisdom and knowledge from those guys. So um, yeah, that wraps it up for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you, I hope you've enjoyed it. Do, do share it with other folk that you might think uh, enjoy aquascaping. I think it's such a beautiful hobby and I'm so grateful to be able to bring these videos to you. Okay, take care. See you in the next one, which will be from Poland. Cheerio.